Okay, I'm back today to work with some peroxide and just see what special effects that can create for us. Um, I'm really interested in just the different effects from the household products or hair products. And just focusing on not having to spend too much money and um, have a little bit of fun with it. So I'm just going to, well, firstly, tape the paper. I forgot to do that. That's nice and flat. Make sure when you buy the tape that it is, there's two types of tapes. The one that is a lot cheaper doesn't tend to stick and the pigment bleeds underneath it. This one here should be a washi tape, should have the name washi in here to help you um, seal it off and it gives you a nice sharp crisp edge. And also, it doesn't um, tear the paper as well, which is quite good. Okay, so we've sealed it down. And here I'm using a 300 GSM Arches watercolour paper, which is um, cold press. So there's hot press and then there's um, cool press, depending on what you want to do. So just with a household brush, apply some, oops, it's a bit grubby, a little bit of black on it. That doesn't really matter, adds to the texture. There we go. Be quite liberal with the water. If you're doing this at home with children or you're doing it, I'm a teacher, so I do it with my students. That's a great intro just to see what happens with colors and pigments. And here I've used Art Spectrum Yellow and um, the Spectrum Red, which is a warm red, those two colours together. And I have other remnants of other colours in that tiny little dish as well. So I'm going to just make sure that I've cleaned my brushes quite well. Okay, I'm just using a flat brush, this one here. I'm just going to dilute it a little bit. You can see that it's quite orange. You want to pop it on pretty much straight away. I want to put a little bit of water in it just to make it a bit more diluted. I'm not too precious. I just like the way it spreads. No one piece is ever the same. Some, you know, I, I have requests sometimes for people saying, oh, can you recreate that same thing? And I, I can't. It's, um, it's spontaneous the way the pigment flows onto that. Um, you might want to darken it up just a little bit. There's a little bit of black in that. And as you can see, you can tilt it and, and allow it to run. I don't particularly want to do that today. I actually want it to pull in areas. Um, just to see what happens. I'll add a little bit of um, cooler yellow here, just to intensify the yellow. So you can't really add it straight on because it is actually quite thick. You probably need to create a couple of little dishes like this where you um, you know, dilute it. If it's not running like, just add some water to it. Let it do its thing. Yeah, that looks quite fantastic there. And then just pick up the pigment again and pop it into those areas and it'll do, it'll run. Okay, maybe in here a little bit. All right, so before it dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment um, with some Peroxide, and I'm just using hair peroxide, 20 bowl, 6% cream peroxide, to see what happens. It's all a bit experimental, but fun to do. See as it hits the paper, so you can actually draw with it. It's got a similar sort of effect as the dishwashing liquid. But it's bleaching out certain areas. That's it. So 
that's your peroxide. So any type of bleaching um, medium would probably work. I wouldn't use my bristles on this because um, it will uh, eat away at the bristles. You won't have a brush left. So just use the end. Or if you have an old brush that you're happy to lose, that's fine too. You can, that's already starting to dry. You can draw if you want with it. I just like to be quite abstract and loose with it. Um, okay, and then I'm also going to try some mold and soap remover, scum remover, which I use in the shower. Make sure it's on. So that does the same thing. So what you could do is when it dries, you can come back and spritz some of those areas. So essentially anything that bleaches, a bleaching agent, you can actually use to create. And if you want, you can drop other colours in. So I'm thinking I might go a little bit complimentary here, just in this section here. I quite like all of it as an analogous colour. This might be a little bit too dark. Let's have a look. Oh, not too bad. So you could drop... Um, some blue in to the areas and allow it to run guide it through like so and it's bleaching out because I've, I've put it into an area that's um, it's already has the bleach as it enters the orange areas it turns a little bit green and you can blow. And really lead it out to different areas. So as you can see, I'm just gonna leave that to dry now. I was just experimenting with the other color just to see what would happen. You can go back in and you can draw little lines out. Sometimes you can draw little images underneath it and accentuate them with some of the um, patterns and textures that are created naturally from the bleaching process and from the runs. There you go. I think that works quite well, just as a bleaching process. So that could be just a, a sheet of paper that if you experimented with, you may decide to paint over the top of it. You may decide to just keep the textures. I often just keep the textures and just add them to my journals. And sometimes I've got textures for a few years and I go back to them and I might print over the top of them. Or I, you know, like I can see a little bit of a dragon happening there. And some, that looks like a little bit of a bird with a beak. So you can draw back into it with felt tip pens, which I might try and do later on.